one of the things a lot of us really take for granted is the DAW as the sampler. And that's really all the digital audio workstation is. It's one giant sampler capable of playing back thousands of audio files and, and giving you the option to preview millions of audio files in really lightning quick time, pretty much at your fingertips. And so don't overlook that. Don't think that, oh, because I have all these virtual instruments, I need to be using them for everything. Absolutely not true. Sampling is a very powerful means to an end. And oftentimes it's a very quick and efficient means to an end, uh, especially if you know what it is you're going for. So don't shy away from using samples just because you might think that you're cheating or not working hard enough. Music production is all about the final result and how listeners react to that final result. You don't need to care what other music producers think about your work. That's not important. I listen to tracks all the time and I hear the exact same snare rolls being used or the exact same hi-hat pattern being used, probably even the exact same sample, which has come from some sample pack. And listeners don't care about that. It's only other music producers that get really critical or get maybe jealous at the popularity of what something else is gaining and achieving. But music production, music in general, it's about how you make people feel and how you get there really doesn't matter in the least. All right, so let's get started. And we're just going to go through some examples here on how the DAW really does act as a sampler, beginning with the fact that we can preview sounds. <laughs> We can do this all in real time. We can do it really quickly. And then once we find something that we like, or once we find something that we think is going to spark an idea, we can go ahead and drag and drop that into the timeline like so. Now, everything I'm going to show you is possible in pretty much every single digital audio workstation that's out there. It's just up to you to know the steps required because the technique and the outcome is pretty much exactly the same. So right now our project is at 110 BPM. This file is at 140 BPM. It's in the key of A minor. If I play this back now, I can see that this has been stretched meaning that it's going to try to fit this 140 BPM into this 110 BPM. And we can see that it's done that because it's lined it up perfectly over this eight bar stretch. So if this was in raw mode, it wouldn't look like that. You can see that it now kind of hangs over that 15 a little bit. So it's literally stretched it out in order to get it to fit and to keep it in key. So if we listen to it, it will just sound a little bit choppy. we can hear how that snare hit is still falling on the beat. Three, four, one, two, three, four. Like so. If it was up to me, I could actually probably make this work and I could go at 110, but 110 isn't the most common BPM in the world. And maybe what I'd like to do is actually slow this down quite a bit and work at a slower BPM. I could actually work pretty much at any BPM I wanted and I'll explain to you why that is. So if I go up to 140, what we're now gonna get is this sample playing back pretty much in raw mode. Right, because it's set up to uh, fit the grid. Now, what I would like is to actually have this playing back quite a bit slower. This is too fast for the vibe that I'm going for. I'm imagining something a little bit slower, a little bit down tempo. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this into repitch mode. And then I'm going to drop my BPM by half. I'm going to take it down to 70. And by doing that, it should just be in theory dropping this an octave. So I don't have to worry about uh, playing in a different key outside of A minor. So I'm going to bring this down to 70. And let's take a listen. So I'm really liking the way that sounds. And if it was up to me, I would be keeping this at 70. And that's what we will do. But just as an FYI, let's imagine that you wanted this sound, this exact sound. Because if we go back into stretch mode and we bring this up to 140 and we drop the pitch by an octave, it's going to sound completely different. And it's still going at that quicker BPM, which is not what I want. So let me show you how you could work at 140, but get the sound that we had before, that slower sound. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually scale this out by 200%. And then all I have to do is now adjust this to 140. So we listen to it right now. It's going to be really slow. And that's actually pretty cool in its own right. And see how far we're taking this regular sample and we can do it so quickly. But if I go to 140, We're now at that halftime feel. So just like that, it's very easy to keep the tempo up if we wanted to do that. And now if we wanted to, for example, let's say that I want this to be 70. Okay, scale it back down. What if I want to work at like 75 BPM, but I don't want to be messing around with the key, with the pitch of this thing? Because if I go and I take this to 75, we'll hear it changing. That's not what I want. I want it to stay locked in here. Well, again, very powerful sampler. I'm going to resample this now. All right, so it's in repitch mode, and I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to bounce it. Okay, so now we have what we had before. The difference is that now we are in stretch mode at 70. So if I'm in stretch mode and I now take this up or down 5 or 10 um, BPM, it's gonna probably still work pretty well, but keep it in the key I'm in. Right, so I can very quickly start to get a vibe and a flow for where I want it to be. So let's go with 75 for now, just to keep this a little bit simple. And let's go in and let's find some kind of hi-hat loop to put on top of this. That's pretty aggressive. This might actually work pretty good without even having to do extra work, but I'm going to do some of the extra work myself. I could probably get away with dropping that in there and just going to town on it, but I'm going to go with, what is this? Ass with two cash signs. Pretty cool. Uh, I think I'm going to go with this max hat. Okay, so let's try that out so that we still have room to put in our own kick drum and stuff. So I'm going to drag and I'm going to drop that in. So by default, again, this is coming in at 140. So this is going to sound a little bit odd. So to get around that, I'm just going to drop the scale here 50%. So now it's actually coming in here at 70 and we're only having to stretch it up by five. That doesn't sound particularly good. Let's try putting it in repitch mode. And this is all sounding like way too quick for me. So why don't I go ahead and I just like will attempt to stretch this out further. Maybe even buy a whole entire bar. And let's see if this is going to fit in nicely. Okay, so by doing just a little bit of trial and error there, I'm trying to find something that's going to fit. 75 seems way too fast for this drum loop for whatever reason. So bringing it down here to 72, locking it in, keeping it at that two bar length seems to work quite nicely. I'm liking the way that this is flowing here. So it might still be a little bit quick and maybe all I really want to take out of this is this final little that moment. And I think that is all I'm going to take from this. So I'm going to get rid of everything else. And this is going to be my turnover on the beat. So it would come somewhere like here at the end of that fourth bar and it would happen again here. And I could actually change things up with the second one if I wanted. I could change the pitch on this one and like, you know, let's see. Let's listen to the differences. 
Or one really cool thing we could do, and again, this is all still just sampling. We're all just keeping this in the DAW. I could go in here and I could actually split this at the onsets. And just by clicking split at onset. And now I could take each one and I could bring the pitch down one with each hit. So that should be minus 6, minus 7, minus 8, and minus 9. Let's see how this sounds. It may not sound very good, but... We'll find out and oftentimes here you also have to do this so let's just try this Ooh, yeah i like the way that sounds and then with this last one here i'm going to split this last part out entirely and what i'm going to do here is i'm going to consolidate it and i'm actually going to have this go out and i'm going to stretch it That may not actually work. <laughs> Stretch it a little bit. Cool. And that might work then really well as we go back around. All right, so just like what you're going to be doing, I'm constantly thinking in real time, trying to come up with new ideas that will possibly fit and work. And I'm thinking one thing I could maybe do is duplicate this and have this one reversing up. So something like that would sound probably pretty cool. I might just adjust the gain down on this and then take the pitch and have that sweep back up. Start in the wrong spot. There we go. It's too much. That sounds pretty good. Maybe only just the one semitone. Yeah, I like the way that sounds. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. And we could even then have this one like pan a little bit like left to right or something. Right, so something like that. And we're still just working with samples. So we just cut out the one little piece we wanted. It is not uncommon for people to sample the little snare rolls and just use that because it's such a pain in the butt to try to put that in with MIDI. All right, let's go over some more sampling examples. Let's rename this to pad and let's rename the other one to snare roll. And maybe the next thing we'll do is actually do a real life, real world sampling. So I'm going to create an audio track here and I'm going to set this up so that we have the input coming in and I'm going to turn the monitoring off so you don't have to hear it really annoying. And let's just see if I do a clap myself, if this is going to weigh a uh, blast over the top here. Okay, so I might be able to get my own clap sound. Let's just set this up to record. Okay, cool. So hopefully one of those will work for me. Let's go ahead and listen back to it. That doesn't sound too good. That might work. And I'm just using the built-in input on my um, computer. So I'm actually thinking about taking that one snap because I had both of my fingers snapping one a little bit after the other. And now what I can do is just get rid of the rest of this. And let's start by layering that in, like on the three of each bar. We might be able to turn it up a little bit. 
And this would also be an example where I would probably go in and use some kind of an uh, effects processor. So let's see how loud was that. Okay, so I have like 13 dB of headroom to work with. Cool. So let's just bring that in. And we're going to layer this as well, but... Right? And maybe the next thing we'd want to do is then just like add some drums on top of this. So this is all just sampling. So uh, we can go into like the Bitwig drum machines. We could use anything we really wanted to. Let's just see if we can find a kit that we like. Uh, let's see. All right, so I've just gone ahead and I've just added in a few more samples and things uh, very quickly. Since we're going to be doing a lot more work with like drum machines and other parts, I'm not going to take this too far. I just wanted to show you some of the things that are possible with basic samples, a little bit of ingenuity, and you know, just kind of trying to find that vibe, just seeing what works. That's where samples are great, you know. Without this little opening loop that we had here. Chances are none of this would have ended up happening. So let's just take a quick listen through and we'll jump back in and talk about uh, using an actual instrument this time instead of just the DAW. But again, the DAW, the most powerful sampler of all, without a doubt. 